Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we will be discussing some concepts which are quite relevant from current financial scenario and we will try to get into the core concept with the help of different set of questions. So we will be picking up five different questions today and I will be explaining you a new topic which is quite important for your RBI exams. So before getting started, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group where we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our latest videos. So let's get started. This is the very first question. Let's have a look at it. The question says, what does it refer to over here? So as you can see, there are two statements mentioned in the question and they are asking you about the concept which is being talked about here. So let's have a look at both of these statements. The first statement says it is a financial institution which is not a bank but performs the bank like functions, especially the financial intermediation by mobilizing the funds and extending the credit. So as you can see, they are talking about some kind of institutions or some kind of firms which are performing the functions like that of bank. They are actually not bank, but they are accepting the deposits, they are making you the loans, they are financing different projects. So what do we call such firms? Let's have a look at the second statement as well. It will provide more clarity. So the second statement says it helps by providing the last mile credit intermediation absorbing and diversifying the risks by catering to the segments not serviced by the banks. So from this statement, what gets cleared is that why do we need such institutions? Why have such institutions when banks exist? So if I talk about such institutions, these organizations or these firms are actually providing you the financial services which are like that of bank but they are not reg regulated like the banks are regulated. That is the reason why we need such institutions. There are a lot of restrictions being imposed on banks. There is a lot of documentation required if you want a loan from a bank, if you want to deposit something. Moreover, as per the bank requirement, certain categories of people are not eligible to get the loans or the finances. So what happens in that case? They will not be able to access the financial services. So for them, certain institutions exist which will be able to cater to those people to their financial service needs by providing them the easy access to funding. So that is why we need such institutions because they are not as much regulated or not having as much restrictions as your banks does. So the formal name which has been given to such institutions is non-banking financial companies. So the answer to this question is option C. These are popularly, popularly known as NBFCs. It is a very important topic from your financial point of view. It is quite in news these days. Today also a new, uh, basically yesterday RBI released a notification which was today in the newspapers. I'll be covering a question regarding that as well. So now RBI is basically focusing on regulating these NBFCs to certain extent because if they are not properly regulated, then it will hamper the financial stability in your nation. So that is the reason why NBFCs also need to be regulated but they are not as much regulated as your banks are. That is why these uh, institutions are basically needed because they cater to those need the needs of those segments which are not catered by banks. Okay, so this was the first question. Now let's move on to question number two. It says, uh, so this is basically a case-based question. So a case study kind of question, what we call a caselet. So Please do read it carefully and try to analyze the concept. At times, the direct questions may not be asked. The questions may be framed in the form of a case. But this case is also not also very difficult. Okay, if you are thorough with the concept of NBFCs, you will be easily able to get through this question as well. So the case talks about a firm called Sriram Transport Firm. So Sriram Transport Firm is the India's largest player in commercial vehicle finance. So CV financing may be a large player hai, and it is a leader in organized financing of pre-owned trucks. So whatever commercial, commercial vehicles 
financing is needed, this firm is there to cater to those needs. It is vertically integrated. It has a vertically integrated business model and offers number of products which include pre-owned financing, new CV financing, other loans like accidental repair loans, tire loans, working capital finance, etc. Now, after reading out the case of Sri Ram Transport, what interpretation can you draw about the type of business organization that Sri Ram Group is? So after reading this case study, you would have easily identified the concept which is being talked about over here. So such kind of a firm, this is not a hypothetical example. Sri Ram Transport firm is really a very popular firm existing in India. What it does, it helps provide the financing for your different commercial assets. Like if you want to purchase a truck for your business purpose, it will provide you the financing. You want to get a loan for its repairs, it will provide that finance as well. So it is providing services like that of bank it is financing your projects so what it is doing like banks it is financing your assets it is providing the loans these are functions of banks so these they are also performing functions like that of bank but is it mentioned anywhere in the question that it's a bank no even if you are not aware that such a firm actually exists after reading the case also you'll understand that it's not a bank because nothing is being told over here they are just saying that it's a transport firm okay which is providing the financing although after reading that it's a transport firm you may think it's a transporter but now after going through the question you would have or after the going to the case you would have understood that they are not providing the transport facilities of taking your goods from one place to another rather they are financing such transporters so obviously it's not a transporter it's not a bank they are not saying that it's a cooperative society which is coming up together for the benefit of members or it's a venture capitalist firm which is financing new uh, projects which are quite risky they are more focusing on their role as a financial services provider so which kind of uh, business organization is basically a financial service provider but still not a bank it is nbfc so the question's answer is nbfc's so this is a really very important case such kind of questions should be e you should be able to answer such questions easily and you will be able to answer them only if you are thorough with the concept of nbfc's now let's move on to question number three this question says, which of the following statement correctly states the functions that can be performed by NBFCs? Now, before reading up these statements, let me discuss few functions of NBFCs with you. As I've already told you in the previous questions about the role of NBFCs, what they are doing? They are performing the functions like that of bank. So they are performing bank-like functions despite of not being a bank now other than that also they are providing various other financial services now let's have a look at the functions which they are catering to they are providing the necessary loans so they are lending they are financing different activities like i gave you the example of sriram transport company it's providing the funding for uh, financing your trucks and other commercial vehicles then it's or uh, then at times the government sells different securities different bonds so they acquire those bonds as well then they provide the leasing or higher purchase facilities as well at times you want to buy a uh, basically any asset and uh, for that you are not having enough money so you may take that asset on a lease and these institutions will help you get those assets and then at times you also try to make payments in installments so those leasing and higher purchase facilities these are basically what these are the asset financing services so these asset financing services are also provided to you by these nbfcs then they are into insurance business as well offering you insurance they are into check business where they collect your funds and try to invest them invest them on your behalf they are collecting the money they accept the deposits, they offer you good returns, and the list is quite long. So these are different kinds of functions, different financial services, which these NBFCs cater to. Now let's move back to the question. You will, be easy, you, you will easily be able to answer this question because I've already discussed up all the functions. Now if I go through the statements and identify the correct functions. So which statements are correctly stating the functions? Lending or financing? for activities other than its own so they are lending and financing like in the Sriram case 
then they are acquiring the assets the venture securities of the government yes they are they provide you the leasing and higher purchase basically they are providing you the asset financing facilities yes they do then they provide the insurance services they are into chit business so these all are the functions of nbfcs so which of the following statement correctly states the functions answer is option e all of the above now let's move on to question number 4 this question says which of the following statement is or are incorrect about the types of nbfcs so there are different categories of nbfcs i'll discuss that first and then we'll move back to the statements so let's have a look at the categorization of nbfcs if you have a look at different the basis of nbfcs on the basis of which we have categorized it into different types there are three bases first is liability second is size and the third is activity so if i talk about uh, the liability part what nbfcs what are the categories of nbfcs on the basis of liability from liability what do i mean is that uh, they are liable to pay you back something so like if we talk about a bank bank is taking your deposits okay so it is not the owner of those deposits it has to return you the money whenever you demand for it so similar in a similar fashion the nbfcs are also categorized on the basis of liability as deposit taking and non deposit taking those nbfcs which are accepting your deposit may be offering you the returns are deposit taking nbfcs and those which don't accept the deposits are non deposit taking at times each and every nbfc doesn't get indulged in a, a deposit taking kind of a business they are providing other financial services but not accepting the deposits accepting the deposits and not being able to cater to the needs of people will make the system a very unstable one unstable one so that is the reason why nbfcs at times don't accept deposit but offer different financial services so that the stability is maintained okay financial stability should not be hampered then is the second categorization on the base these non deposit taking nbfcs are further categorized on the basis of size so what is the what are basically the classifications under size under this there are certain non deposit taking nbfcs which are systemically important which are very important from the system they have a lot of activities which they are indulged in so in this very regard those nbfcs which are non deposit taking but have a large asset size what size has been mentioned 500 crores or more they are systemically important okay if they are not able to function properly it will basically harm the stability of the system so they are categorized in a different category and then there are other non deposit holding companies which we called nbfcs non deposit taking so nbfc non deposit taking is one category and nbfc non deposit taking but systematic systemically important is another category on the basis of size then we have on the basis of activity now there are different functions which are being performed by nbfc as i have already mentioned to you so on this basis on the basis of various activities which they conduct there is a long list of nbfcs which we can have only some of them have been listed here like some nbfcs finance your assets so they are asset finance company then there are some which are providing the loans there are loan companies there are some which are providing the platform where the people can lend and borrow from each other so there are peer to peer lending platform nbfcs then there are some which are financing the housing projects so there are housing finance companies and again the list is quite long so these are basically the broader classification of the types of nbfcs now let's move back to our question and have a look at it so we have to identify the incorrect statements about the types of nbfc so this incorrect word is important otherwise you will make a mistake in answering this question so the first statement says on the basis of activities nbfcs can be classified as deposit and non deposit accepting this statement is wrong on the basis of liabilities this is the classification second statement says on the basis of liabilities nbfcs can be classified as systemically important and non systemically important this is again wrong that is the classification on the basis of size 
on the basis of liabilities this is the classification and then the third statement says on the basis of size NBFCs can be classified as non-deposit taking NBFC systemically important and other non-deposit holding companies. So this statement is absolutely correct. So the incorrect ones are first and second. The answer to this question is option C. I hope you have understood this question well. Now let's move on to the last question. So this was uh, the latest update which I was talking about. Yesterday only RBI came up with a notification on risk-based internal audit. So the risk-based internal audit launched by RBI in 2021 is not applicable to which of the following. Before reading these statements, let me discuss you discuss up with you this very concept. So what is this risk-based audit? Risk-based internal audit. So auditing is really very important. It makes sure that you are providing correct financial information. You are maintaining the transparency and not working in a way which can harm the society or harm you as well. So a new framework has been devised by RBI for NBFCs as well. Although this is not a new concept in existence, it is already there for the banks. But for NBFCs, this framework was not followed. But now RBI has said that the, so there are certain kinds of NBFCs which have to follow this framework. So let's have a look at this framework. It is known as RBIA, which is the Risk Based Internal Audit Framework. Now, an effective risk based internal audit framework is what? It's basically an audit methodology. A way to conduct audit which will link the risk management framework and what it will do it will provide an assurance to the board and the senior management now if you are carrying out the auditing and side by side you are also making sure that your risks are getting properly managed you are working in a proper fashion where the risks are where you're not taking a lot of risks which can hamper the society or hamper the stability then that kind of audit is risk-based audit what it will do it will assure the board of directors the people at the top level the investors that this firm is not that very risky your money your amount is secure right so it will provide that assurance to the board and the senior management on what on the effectiveness of your internal controls it will make sure that your internal controls are proper your risks are managed your governance the governance of your firm is good so this framework was basically mandatory for all commercial banks other than the regional rural banks since 2002 so long back this framework was already working for your banks but Taking into consideration the present scenario, if you're not regulating the NBFCs in a proper manner, then obviously it will harm the nation. So it will harm the stability as everything is linked up together. So we need to make sure that they are also properly regulated. So audit was there, but now risk-based audit has come up. Let's move ahead and try to get into the score concept. So RBI has now decided to adopt this framework for NBFCs as well. Now, what kind of NBFCs are put up under this framework? So three things are mentioned over here. These, uh, these three kinds of firms have to adopt this very framework. So all deposit taking NBFCs irrespective of their size. As I've told you, there are some NBFCs which accept the deposit and some which don't. So those who are accepting the deposit, they have to follow this framework. Then if we talk about non-deposit taking NBFCs, in their case, only those NBFCs which are having a set size of 5,000 crores and above, only they have to use this very framework, right? And then there are this, uh, other than NBFCs, there are some urban cooperative banks also. So for them also, this framework is applicable if they have a size of 500 crores and above. RBI have given certain timeline within which such framework should be adopted and that is 31st March 2022. So this how can it help if I talk about the historical or the previous audit system which was existing for these NBFCs. What did it focus on? It had a limited area not focusing on risk management. 
so it just focus on testing all your transactions that you are entering into correct transactions not manipulating the people then you are uh, accurate and your accounts the records which you are sharing are correct they can be relied upon your financial reports are correct you are portraying your current your correct financial position you are following all the legal and regulatory requirements so just the basic audit features were covered over here but now if you talk about this changed scenario if this rbia framework will be adopted then what will happen other than transaction testing and all such activities certain additions have been made what are those it will make sure that all the potential risks are identified and the steps are taken to mitigate them so it will have a check on your firm's uh, risky activities what kind of risky activities are you undertaking are you undertaking any steps to mitigate that risk to make sure that you are able to function in a proper way or not so risks will get managed your internal control systems will get better your governance will get better that is the very objective of rbia scheme not a scheme basically a framework so now let's move on to the question you will easily be able to answer it it's quite a direct one now after understanding the concept so you have to identify that to which kind of organization this framework is not applicable so not word is here important all deposit taking nbfcs yes they have to follow this framework all non deposit taking nbfcs with assets side of i size of 5000 crore or more yes they have to follow it all ucbs that is urban cooperative banks having assets size of 500 crore and, and above yes they also have to follow this framework so all these three are correct it is not that it's not applicable to any one of them so answer is option e none of the above so this was all for today's session it's a really very important topic especially from your descriptive point of view as well that is why i got in, into the i got deeper into the concept and try to explain you the concept so that you will be able to answer the questions in a proper manner this was all from my side i hope you liked the session and found it useful with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much